During the 1920s, two of the most important discoveries in the history of science were made here at the Mount Wilson Observatory overlooking Los Angeles. For eight years, astronomer Edwin Hubble photographed and studied the cosmos with the largest telescope in the world. In 1923, Hubble confirmed that mysterious formations called nebulae, widely believed to be enormous clouds of gas, stars, and dust within the Milky Way, were actually individual galaxies located far beyond our own. Five years later, he verified that these galaxies were moving away from each other at fantastic speeds. Our universe, long thought to be eternal, static, and relatively small, was growing larger by the second. The implications were staggering. If the universe is continually expanding, then at some point early in its history, it must have been smaller and more compact. If you reverse the outward motions of the galaxies and go backward in time, they come closer and closer together, and you reach a point finally where they're nearly infinite in density and temperature, and farther than that you can't go. So there is a beginning, there is a, a point in time from which it all started. And that's a remarkable thing because it has a very strong theological flavor to it. And that intrigued me because I am an agnostic, and if there was a beginning, a moment of creation in the universe, then there was a creator. And a creator is not, not compatible with agnosticism. And just as I can't believe that there was a creator, I can't believe that this all happened by chance, which implies there was a creator. So you see, I'm, I'm in a completely uh, hopeless uh, bind, and I've stayed there. Robert Jastrow's uncertainty was fueled by multiple discoveries that pointed to a universe created out of nothing and governed by laws of physics and chemistry finely calibrated to ensure complex life. Life is so extraordinary, especially advanced life, intelligent life, conscious beings are such an extraordinary phenomenon that again, I just qualitatively find it difficult to believe that they happened by chance. Think of your brain, for example. It's three pounds of matter, contains a million trillion synapses, as I recall. Circuits opening and closing all the time. It's so much more complicated than the most advanced artificial intelligence. Again, I find it hard to believe that this is all a matter of atoms and molecules. And so I try to fit into my concept of the world the uh, conclusion that there is a larger force of some kind which we can call God, or you can call it whatever. But I can't accept that. I'm uh, what's called a materialist in philosophy. That doesn't mean I like Cadillacs and big cars. My students always used to think that. It means that I believe the world consists entirely of material substances. And when you specify those substances, the atoms and molecules, and the laws by which they interact, you've done it all. There isn't anything more to, to be said or inserted into your model of the universe. That's what my science tells me, and I'm, you know, I've been a scientist all my life, but I find it unsatisfactory. In fact, it makes me uneasy. I feel I'm missing something, but it will not, uh, I will not find out what I'm missing within my lifetime. Robert Jastrow died in 2008. As the founder of NASA's Goddard Space Institute and the director of the Mount Wilson Observatory, he helped to popularize astronomy throughout the world. In his best-selling book, God and the Astronomers, Jastrow described the philosophical conflict between scientific materialism and evidence for a universe that had a beginning. Far from disproving the existence of God, astronomers may be finding more circumstantial evidence that God exists that the universe began abruptly in an act of creation. For the scientist who has lived by his faith in the power of reason, the story ends like a bad dream. He has scaled the mountains of ignorance. He is about to conquer the highest peak. 
And as he pulls himself over the final rock, he is greeted by a band of theologians who have been sitting there for centuries. <laughs>